What's up, Doombots? Tony Skinjili here with a different kind of video, one I usually don't do. Now, obviously, you can all read the blog post, so I'm not going to recite it to you. You can read, I'm sure. Uh, and I'm not going to be another person that's just going to remake the Strike Time video. So I'm going to look at what they've talked about, and I'm going to add a little bit more to it, kind of like planning and procedural stuff for what the Sinister Six are going to look like going further. If you didn't watch Strike Time, which, let's face it, no one watches Strike Time, which you don't know, Doc Ock... He is a villain tech support character. Haha, -ha, City Tag, Spider-Verse, Sinister Six, Legendary, blah, 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 all that stuff. His basic is an attack that applies slow. Uh, his special is what summons the Sinister Six character. Now, I believe it only summons the uh, core of the original Sinister Six team. So it will just summon either like Shocker, Vulture, Rhino, Green Goblin, or Mysterio, uh, whoever is missing. Uh, if you use that when all of the missing characters are present, so it won't summon Electro or Swarm, but it'll summon one of the original ones. If you use it when you have all of the members of the Sinister Six present, it will instead give that person like a 100% turn meter. It also functions as a heal, uh, where you can apply regeneration to himself and everybody else. Does a little bit more in war, both on offense and defense. No big deal. He also applies charge to any Sinister Six member that can receive charge, which is him and the new ones, I guess. Uh, I believe it's ready on turn one, and it's like a four energy, so no big deal. His ultimate is just an attack, and it flips positive effects uh, into negative effects. It's an AoE, so it hits everybody, and every single target has a, like a Symbiote Spider-Man special where the, the negative effects are prolonged. I think it's by one, but it might be by two with investment. That I don't remember. Uh, his passive, which originally I thought was the feature that summoned the character. Nope, it happens when you want. Which makes him phenomenal as an independent character because he will always, on turn one, add a member of the Sinister Six to your team. So if you want to get really cute with characters like Sinister, Hela, and him, you could start a fight with pretty much most of the characters uh, that you could have extra on the team present and uh, if you're lucky you might end up getting the right kind of character for the fight which is usually not green goblin but maybe a shocker to give a little offense up in an aoe maybe a vulture for an aoe slow with a aoe turn rewind followed up there's a whole bunch of options you got going on so overall his kit seems fine as far as his passive he has a lot of war stuff you know uh, mostly with the sinister six on war so look at him like a, you would look any other legendary character on their team makes that team phenomenal either side of a war um you know brotherhood is phenomenal on offense but you really need magneto the guardians the bkt used to be a great defense team and now it's pretty much an offense team it's going to be kind of the same thing they're a really solid like fantastic four level war team as far as offense is concerned and they even get better on defense because you're going to constantly have to fight up against more and more characters and you really don't know who you're going to have to deal with uh when as his first turn he's going to summon someone random but uh basically every time he blocks he heals characters which is huge in war because deflects exist from you know boosts he gives i think a giant amount of max health like 40 percent or something max health at max investment uh, so that's huge and i don't think anyone can ever receive offense down he's got that like ridiculous uh you know plus 10,000 or 100,000 stat to offense down. Again, I, I don't know the exact detail. I know it's enough that you're like, oh, okay, my characters won't be offense down. And that's kind of the setup for what this seems going to be. Everything I've seen about Doc Ock specifically is saying this is a war defense character. So if you don't get the two new characters, uh, basically you build a team that's like Doc Ock, Shocker, Rhino, Mysterio, and Vulture. And the reason you want that to be the core of your team is because you want Mysterio more or less to be present for the focus that he can use with a lot of other people. Uh, and then you would summon the Green Goblin as the uh, seventh, sixth member, 18th, depending on how many people you're using, sixth member of the Sinister Six. And then every turn that he would be able to special after that, he goes ahead and, you know, gives that Green Goblin or actually whatever the character it randomly chooses because it chooses from the pool give that character 100% turn meter. That's no problem. Uh, and it gets better, obviously, as you include the new characters. Now, Swarm, we did see in this, without going into too much detail, 
His kit is very simple. Attack primary target for damage and drain. The amount of damage, I don't know. It's probably not great. I'd say somewhere in the 200 range. But again, it does have drain. How much drain? Well, if it doesn't have at least like 50% drain, that's like the cutoff for drain, then it's not, then it doesn't matter. What 10 to 20% drain is nothing. It's got to be at least 50%. At least half of his damage has to be returned as heals, or it's not worth it. Uh, it's another one of those basics that does a rebound chain. Uh, and if charged, lose a charge. If not charged, attack self for damage. Obviously, you see why the charge is relevant with Doc Ock, but unfortunately, you know, we're going to have to get him some charges or that basic is really going to start hurting himself. How much damage is he attacking himself? Well, anytime someone does damage to themselves in this game, it's always like an absurd amount. So I'm going to say that whatever the actual damage this attack does, like if it did 200 damage, his attack would hit himself for 300% damage. And if it did like 300, it would do like 4 or 500% damage. Every time, even crossbones, every time they hurt themselves, it's always a ton. So that's not something I'm like really looking forward to using all the time on basic. Uh, his special B scream, attack the primary target and apply disrupted. If the primary target has disrupted, bonus attack again. So if it's already someone who's been disrupted, you can do that. If the primary target has defense down, bonus attack for damage. And they're not telling you the damage, obviously, but let's be clear. If B scream is to be anything, this damage has to be somewhere in the 200 range, um, or else we're just not doing damage. He's a controller, so it might be a little lower. It might be in like the 170, 180, but that's where that kind of goes. If the primary target is defense down, bonus attack again. So it's kind of cool because it does a pretty decent chunk of damage at the first place, I'm sure, like I said, again, it's in that 200 range, but then you're constantly doing bonus attacks so it doesn't necessarily matter if it's the same amount. So if he does 200 and then it's like 150, 150, that'll still be a total amount of ridiculous damage, but it's gonna constantly do extra stuff. Um, and if charged, again, lose one charge. If not, attack cell four. I'm going to go ahead and assume it's the same thing. So if this entire attack would be hypothetically 500 damage, then he would do 400 to himself, or, or more or less kind of the same thing. So, we don't know, but we'll find out. Ultimate, be gone. <sighs> that pun sucks. So, you know, it says it's energy cost, no big deal. Attack all enemies for... I'm going to assume it's another generic ultimate 300% giant damage AoEs. Those are what you commonly see against characters that aren't legendary, and even some that are. Uh, apply... Bleed for two turns, and then again, if charged, lose one charge. If not charged, attack cell for damage. More or less, it just seems like Swarm is a bunch of bees that doesn't know how to control himself, and every action is, like, scary if you don't have a charge. Uh, his passive, on spawn, gain four charge. The good news is, since the Sinister Six has long been, like, a two-turn combo team, we're not really seeing Swarm as a raid character, you know? Like... Unless you're using Doc Ock and him in a raid, and you don't have a healer yet, which I'm not sure if Electro is going to offer that, uh, you're probably not getting too much value out of that setup. Like, even when he throws that charge up, it ain't going to do much. Uh, on turn, if charged, heal for a percentage uh, of this character's max health, then flip two negative effects to positive. So, his kit is literally designed to be like, after four turns, I'm going to die by my own hand. And that's fine. Like, it's a cool kit. I don't have any thoughts on him. He doesn't seem like the kind of character you want to immediately run and buy, but it is what it is. Um, nothing else to really talk about. He gains some percentage of dodge per charge. Wonderful. I, I assume that as a controller character with this kind of kit, he's going to have four hit points, uh, very similar to like Rocket or Pyro. Uh, he's just not going to have any hit points. And he's also going to be somewhat of a higher damage. They tend to make controllers really weird in that some of them do a ton of damage. And some of them are, like, amazing healers. Eh, who knows? Uh, those details, we don't see the numbers. We're never going to until they come out. Even msf.gg is still kind of, like, best guesswork. I do use them, but, like, yeah, you don't know. Um, that's pretty much it. The only thing we don't have information on right now, and the only thing we don't know is Electro, right? We know Electro's coming out. We know they even mention it in kind of, like, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, zap. Like, we're getting Electro. So let's talk about her. Let's figure out what her kit's going to look like and what it kind of has to look like to make the entire team work. So as of right now, 
we have like we gotta have to have a basic what's the basic gonna do now we don't know anything about it so it's just gonna probably do damage and that's it we if something is probably going to go ahead and apply disrupt it just seems like they need that push on that team no one else is applying disrupt really so maybe something maybe the basic i don't know but the basic is probably just going to be attack damage and electro is clearly a bio blaster character there's no way around it she will have absolutely positively like nothing else she's a bioelectric character that's her ability it comes from not technology but like weird bio reaction and she's a blaster because duh electro uh name is in it so a special One thing that's weird that I've noticed is that, like, characters on the Sinister Six tend to really, really, really like to target people with debuffs. We saw it with Swarm, and we saw it with uh, Vulture when Vulture's basic first hit. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that one of her attacks is going to have something to do with either buffs or debuffs. That's probably where I'd land on my special. Uh, and then the ultimate, uh, who knows, it's probably another hit everybody or hit, like, like, it's either going to be hit one person for a giant chunk of damage or hit multiple people for a pretty average chunk of damage. Again, averaging at like 300 seems to be a percentage damage. But I would pretty much guess that that kind of character as a blaster on the team is going to take what Green Goblin does and make it 100% better. So when I think about what characters are getting off the Sinister Six... Green Goblin's number one on the list, and some people say Mysterio, I disagree, I think it would be Vulture, realistically, because he doesn't, like, hold up after he does his two things, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, so if that's the core of the Sinister Six, I'd probably say it's going to require Electro and uh, Swarm, because they're new, and duh, this is how this game works, and then Doc Ock, and then the other two characters would probably be... Mysterio and Rhino or Shocker and Rhino based on what kind of fight you think this is going to be and then hopefully Doc Ock will summon not Green Goblin until the end. That, that's kind of where I'm guessing this fight's going to go. But this is all just complete speculation. Uh, we Electro is made of electricity therefore something in her kit's going to require charges. I can't possibly imagine what that is. Speculation would just be that charges will make them do more damage that's it like that uh, she is a blaster character that's pretty much what she'd have to do uh if she wasn't a blaster then like you can go cute with control or anything like that but like electro bio blaster it's damage is what blasters do right very few blasters have value outside of being damaged like uh cable is a little bit tanky for a blaster but again this is another character that i assume has like no hit points is incredibly squishy uh, think like Shocker, but like kind of flip it on its side. But that's all complete speculation based on a character we don't really have information on right now. Uh, but we do, like I said, you can see it right here. We do kind of already have confirmation that Electro is coming. And when she does, it would be really interesting to see how uh, her kit and which other of the last Sinister Six members, you know, now that we have eight Sinister Six members, uh, which ones are incredibly important, you know, until we find out how much focus is required, then we don't know if Mysterio is relevant, but if they all do a ton more damage, Mysterio's uh, special becomes amazing, because whoever it calls is going to do something insane. Uh, Rhino is the tank on the team, but then again, you might not need a tank that charges. You just, it might never come up. You might just want to be a pure damage team. Uh, especially in, if you're using him on war offense, the Rhino might just not do enough unless he's got a really high investment. So we'll kind of figure it out. In my mind, it's some kind of weird shocker, Mysterio, Rhino is the core of the team that you want to put in. And then it'll be like Electro, Doc Ock, and Swarm to figure it out. But that's pretty much it. I just wanted to take a look at what we've seen, kind of speculate a little on what we could see and where that team will go. And obviously as more information comes out about not only the kits of those characters, like real numbers, as well as what Electro actually does, I might be able to come and revisit this. But since a lot of you guys have been asking me on stream what I think about this kit, what I think about this passive, what I think about this person, I gotta say, 
it's worth it to at least spend some time, look at it, and give you these are my thoughts. Overall, I will say that absolutely none of this is coming across as something that you will be miserable if you don't get. So don't feel that bad if you miss out on Doc Ock. Don't feel that bad if you can't afford or don't want to buy Electro or uh, Swarm. They're just going to be characters that are part of a war-style team. Maybe Doc Ock has a little bit of extra value outside in some raids just as a character on his own, but ultimately, like I've said many times before, the Sinister Six is already a war defense team. They're probably going to see a couple of updates to characters. Like I would assume maybe Mysterio might get a little bit of a boost because he's the only character on that team that is kind of useful, but still a little bit low. Green Goblin's probably going to get tossed immediately. And that's it. That's all I have to say on this. Comment below and let me know what you think. You think I'm in kind of in the same vicinity of what these guys are going to do? Or if you think I'm completely wrong again, like I was when I said Doc Ock was probably going to summon the characters on, like, as a passive, like on spawn, as opposed to it being an ability, which I think is amazing. Uh, and I'm happy to be wrong about that. Let me know. Comment. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Stingili, and I'll catch you later.